fucking get my door put? Put the fucking door in. Good evening, once again, it's the Pest Pack and it's Blink and we're on. The tonight show is going to be a true story from Spain. I've says it in my book in a chapter, I'm sure it's chapter 26 and it's pain in Spain and it's one of the wildest nights of my life and how I never <laughs> get through 16 stories up from the Guardia Seville or whatever they were called, well... I'm a lucky person still to be here today. So uh, let's get right into the story. Let's not mess about going to Cumbernauld, run, Cumbernauld Roundabout even. Or uh, Steps Roundabout. Let's just get to the big roundabout over in Benidorm. So it was 2006, as I said. I was seeing a girl. I'll not even say her name. Just say her first name is Kirsten. That's it. Uh, we decided to go to Spain. Who goes to Benidorm for four days? We did. So before that, I went to Ireland. Uh, I went to Belfast for two days. So I Belfast from Tuesday to Thursday. First time I'd been there. Great city, by the way. Great, great holiday. Great, great wee holiday place. Plenty of culture and that there. So I came back and I uh, came back and I... Uh, we went there holiday the next morning, we got on the plane, went there, but can I say this on there? I took an illegal substance with me, right? I cheeked it. I'm not going to say what it is just now to get over there. So my warped mind at the time, I had a problem with cocaine. Okay, I had a problem with cocaine. At that time, 2006, 15 years ago it was. So I took a farmer's daughter, everybody knows a farmer's daughter from Road Wars. So I cheeked it, I never let her know I had it. So we got there, we went to the Hotel Melia, 16 up. And uh, things went okay on the Friday. Saturday afternoon it went swimmingly down at the pool. This farmer's daughter still hadn't went near because I wouldn't cheat. One thing is, I'm not a cheater, right? So, the farmer's daughter, she's there, you know what I mean? She is there. She's a pretty girl as well. <laughs> she gets excited. So, <laughs> I know you are all laughing out there going like, Ian, come on now, we know what a farmer's daughter is. It's not the farmer's daughter at go safe and you go get her. So, that's up to your imagination, but I'm not seeing any further. So, it went swimmingly. Saturday night, out for a meal, lovely meal we had. Still okay, we're enjoying it. I had a wee bit of a suntan from that day. I love my son. I've always loved my son, Faye. I was, I was younger. The first first holiday I had was at 22. My boy went to holiday at two. So anyway, hey ho, that's it. So let's get straight into the story. Ian was thinking in his wicked mind, I want a... <laughs> Right, let's get it straight here. For all you, uh, this is an 18 parental guidance here. You don't need to listen to this. And remember, this is my past life for the kids of today. you got the straight path, you got that slippery path, and I'm all about consequences. So don't everybody say, Ian, oh, you're a hypocrite, you're this, you're that. I'm letting you know what I've done, and I'm trying to guide you to not do it. So... 2006, I was 45, still felt young, know what I mean, still feel young now, you know what I mean? So, Saturday night, what does Ian do? That's that phone bloody well gone again, I'm on a live stream, or whatever it's called, a live interview, which is out next week. I'm not going to answer it, yes. Stay away, phone, stay away. So, uh, it's not going to put me off. So we had the meal Saturday night, we went to a karaoke bar and I was thinking about the farmer's daughter. No, I wasn't cheating, you know what I don't want you to say. But, oh, it was good, it was pure. <laughs> so, I says, oh, I need to know that. But no, I was thinking in my warped, it was a warped mind. I was thinking, if she is cheeky, I'm taking the farmer's daughter and I'm not sure. But if she's be good, I'm not taking the farmer's daughter. She can get her own plane back, right? So, what does he do? Couple of sherbets, whoa, couple of vodkas, whoa. I know, she's up in my room waiting. 
So cut to the chase. I think I created an argument with this what mind the mind went, Oh and she says she says what I say oh, I get all of stormed back to the room. So it was only about half eleven. So she went to the toilet and I got the farmer's daughter out. She came out and uh, she was a slim, slim farmer's daughter. I put a big thing like that on the table and I went, so you know what the farmer's daughter is now. I'm letting the cat out the bag. So she came out and she thought, she went, oh, you chunky cunt. And I went, that's right. I says, I'm an addict. Okay, I need help. So I thought she was going to kick the table. There was 7G there, right? I went, it was pure, pure stuff. No, I mean, I blended it in there a lot. No, I mean, it was good gear. Take two of these things, you get your Superman. So anyway, she went, I'm disgusted with you, you know, no, 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 no. I said, we'll fell out anyway. She says, we'll fell out. So I got a bottle of San Miguel out of the fridge. And I took my farmer's daughter into shorts, flip flops, and of course, nice t shirt. Something to look good. 45 years of age. And for the kids, the kids don't think I'm showing sure off. I'm not showing sure off. It's just a true life story event. So I'm out in the balcony, just at twelve o'clock. Another wee one. I was feeling great. So I was feeling really great. Forgot about her indoors. I was drinking the San Miguel, and I was looking up at the stars. It was something a romantic thriller. So it was because he can do romantic thrillers and all that. You know what I mean, he's really good at love stories and. So, I was drinking the San Miguel, sitting back like Jack the Lad. Stop this phoning when I'm on a live call. And that's how you know it's live. Bloody monkeys. Cheeky monkeys. So I say to my wee daughter, yeah, cheeky monkey. So anyway, get back to the story, not like that thing. Right? So I went, Ian, you're looking at the stars, you're in Benidorm, it's a Saturday night. Wait, you're waiting on, get out there, just to have fell out. And the stars were twinkling, and I think they were actually making a message to me and saying, Get yourself out there, son, get yourself out. So I came in. She was lying in her bed, right? She, she'd done enough. She went off. But to tell you, I think she was trying for a line out, she wasn't getting it. So uh, I went into the safe, the night safe, four or five hundred euros, you know what I mean? And I left a credit card there. And uh, so when I had money at the time, right, I mean, I've not got it now, but I'm quite happy. But that was a good night, 15 years ago. So what I decided to do, I just went, bye. She went, I'd bye, chunk you can't. Right. So I went to a taxi rank, and I had a plan in motion, and this plan in motion was ridiculous, by the way, because I says, I need to get her back. But what has she done in? She has done, fuck, oh, sorry for swearing, viewers. You know, I don't swear a lot in the Blink New Miss It podcast. Uh, I says, right, I knew what I was doing. So I went to a taxi rank, right, in my nut, I burn it. Six G, and a bit left, and 500 euro or something. So there was an old taxi driver at the front and a young one at the back. So I knew what I was doing. So I went to the old guy and I says, here, there's 10 euros, can I use some at the back? He went, hey, no problem. So I jumped in the taxi, I'm trying to speed this up because I want to try and get the story finished. No, I mean, I don't want to bore you because some people might have read it in the book. Or, they heard that I've done it with a wild man, but I'm doing it myself now. And uh, the wildest night of my life. So I says to the young guy, Can you take me to a brothel? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, Brothel? I can't do that accent like Spanish and all that. I don't know if you better find me. I says, yes, I laugh. Love is laughing, you're right, because it's first time he's laughed. Eh, I can say a dos, a saversa, por favor. What does that mean? Two beers, please. But I can't say dos perversa to young ladies. <laughs> so anyway, I says to the young guy, you take me in the bottle for you? Right, 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 right. I says, right, take me in the room, mate. I says, I'll get you a good tap. Oh, by the way, I shut myself. It started to take me out in the country. Right, about 20 minutes later, and I'm going like, the gear's kicking in. It was right, it was a good gear, right? And I went, oh, See what among me and that, but doesn't even worth got any money on that. I mean, I says to him, I says, mate, I says, look, because it was kicking in faster stuff. And I says to him, I says, look, mate, I says, eh, uh, are we cool? Oh, yeah, 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 I'll take you. I says, no, and I was bright with him and I'm going, look, mate, eh, see if you take me a good place and all that. I says, I'll just be in and out. He 
He went, oh, don't you worry. And then the guy tipped and he went, cool down, it's going to be cool. I says, because no, I says, I'm going to use you. I want to go different places this night. So he says, okay. So we arrived, it took about 25 minutes, but it sounded like fucking two days. So I'm sitting there going, I'm getting mugged with his pals, but they don't know what I've got in my pocket. So anyway, we went there and he went, see that place there? It was like something out of Bonanza. No, that cowboy, I think. It just sat there itself, know what I mean? And I went, fuck, see? Horses in the back. The girls were the horses. They were nice. Right, so I went in and, and uh, horses are nice. I patted them over eye books. Other good horses and all that. Good horses. I made mince and tortoise, but I'm not getting any carrots in it. So anyway, get off the story. Ian, stop talking one load of Mac Aroni. So he says, go down there. I says, it won't be long. And you know how I says, it won't be long? I'll tell you in a minute. So I went in and all these girls were just pretty girls were just standing there, 12 of them, and one came over to me right away and I went, bingo, that's what I want. So I'm hastily in my actions trying to get a hold of her, and she, I've got, uh, uh, and she went, cool down, then the madame came over, and she says, do you like that girl there? I went, like her? Is she not Kelly Minogue? She went, Kelly Minogue? I says, I says, I says she says, would you like to get a drink first? And I went, yeah, 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 yeah. Get how much you want. Uh, double vodka, okay? And coke, you double vodka, okay? I went, yes. So then my dad came over and went, there you go. She went, 82 euros. Well, wait a minute. 82 euros for two double vodkas. Uh, I was in for a fuck. But I knew I was getting fucked. Right? 82 euro. Would you pay that, Livy? 80, but you wouldn't do that, you're married. But you might have done it when you weren't married. So I went, right, okay then, I'll take that. Uh, I know I keep saying take that, take that, but Gary Barlow, nah. Robbie Williams, you were the best. You felt a neb off and everything, 300,000. But off the story again, Ian, stop it. So, so I went, so this girl can speak a wee bit English. She went, do you like me? I like you, all right. I've been to the toilet for another one of them that was kicking in. So I went, I like you, but I'm not going to fucking move you for long enough. You know what I mean? I'm in and out. So then Madame says, negotiated a price. She says, oh, I said, it's the cheapest. I said, it's the steer of us. She went, you can take her for 150, I'm sure she says, 150 euros for half an hour. I went, okay, I'll do that. Hundred fifty, then I've already been eighty. So when we had one, so into this room, she started washing me down there. But I washed up for days anyway, so she done the right thing. So uh, then she told me to line this table. <laughs> she just wanted to chain me up. Does she know I've got euros? But nobody knows. A t-shirt and flip flops and shorts on. So there was a mirror, and I went. I'm getting mugged. All these paranoia thoughts that that stuff does to you. That's how I say to the kids of today, don't take it. Right, <laughs> don't take it. Oh, Ian, you've got these two paths. What about your own path? Christ, you're not a third path. So anyway, is this parental guidance over 18? I done what I had to do. It lasted less than a minute. And Kylie says, is that it? And I says, you should be so lucky because she's getting 150 euro for a minute. I couldn't wait to get these shorts and that back on, right? Yeah, I had a boxers on and all, some great shirts, no bang in there, but it's again, we can't. So uh, I was just glad to it and I went, oh, like, she went, oh, that's good, eh? I says, that's good. Fucking easy, it's 150 you've had. You've, had, <laughs> you've, you've done me for... 80 euro for two vodkas. Back came, you can buy, what, four litres of vodka for that and 20 quid each. But I was the cairn. So I got it and uh, in and out, that's why they call me blank. Fast. <laughs> Not fast. So the taxi driver's amazingly sitting there, he's smiling and he's going, hi, and I went, oh, thank God. And I jumped in and he went, enjoy yourself, big man. I went, aye. I says, it was in and out. He went, you weren't there in a long time. I says, it's a long story. I says, can, this is me pigeon uh, Spanish again. Can you take me to a rave? A rave? Yes, of course I can. I says, what time's it open? He says, 
so you want to be able to. Then driving down, I went, I'm going to get a good tip now, right? No, I think I left him, uh, I think I gave him 50 euro before I went in anyway, you know what I mean? Because he thought I was fingering. So he's already got 50 euro. And I says, I'll take you to the rave, yeah? I says, well, get in there. Of course, I don't understand. Then I says to him, I went a wee bit deeper, can you get me a taxi? And he went, he spoke now and went, what, you looking for a case? <laughs> I didn't know he could speak English, I didn't know that pungent English thing. And so he went, yes, he went, you want? I went, two or three. She said, right. I'll tell you one thing, the guy was fair. I only gave him, I think it was 30, 30 euros, for it. so I gave him 40 euros. Right? I don't even give me 50, I paid 150. Then I gave him another 50 euro out. So I think I gave the guy 200. No, I gave the guy 100 fare. I spent I spent 150 for the in and out shot with Kylie, you should be so lucky. So it was 250, 80 for the vodkas. Three thirty, the keys forty. So I had I had over a hundred pounds right left, hundred euro left. So anyway, I'm in the rave and I'm like ah, and it was the Dave Pierce two thousand and eight trans album CD one. This was two thousand six. Uh, I think it might have been Tiesto and all that, whatever. So anyway, I'm standing there, full of drink, full of air keys. Chico, I'm looking at uh, the crowd in here. I says, I could be half of their grander. <laughs> no, I mean, I, oh, but I had a great night. So I wandered out there about half seven. Didn't know where I was, but I was enjoying myself. I'm a single man, right? So I wondered about these parts now that the pubs open late and some people can keep no no mum. So I wondered, and I, I wander over, over. Benidorm, I forgot where I stayed, no, I, I was the Cairn, didn't know how to go home yet. So this wee pub was open, and it was a wee Irish club on it. So I went in, got a drink, have Sam McGrell, double vodka, double vodka in there, was only about what? Six or seven euros, cheap, it wasn't 80. So, so I started these guys free, free, free pool and I went, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm brilliant in the pool and all that, right? I'm fucking flying. But I've been in the toilet and I've got my fucking belt in again. And I came out and I went, can I get a game? And they went, oh, you need to put your, your euro down and all I went, what euro? She says, she's going there. I went, all right. Where am I? And I went, you want a few things again? And one he went, here, mate, where have you been tonight? I says, a fellow with my girlfriend, I pumped Kylie Minogue, I put a rave, I've took fucking three eckies, and I'm thinking, he says, but you're taking that others. I went, hi. I went, go and use Ali. I went, no problem, mate. So I went in and gave him a lady. So I was on next, and I'm shouting, I can beat Ronnie S11, right? But I always say that since I've got, because Ronnie S11 Senior is one of my best friends. I saw him in Chigwell two years ago. So uh, she's telling his pals, and went, see before you go in, can you give me two pals? I, I went in the toilet. <laughs> right, so I'm going, I get beat by the way, you know what I says? Can you stop? This is the last couple of weeks you've been trying to interrupt me. Who is it? If it's an emergency, I'll deal with it. This comes first to show. We try to put out live content here, a good content. So anyway, the story is, uh, this is our flying. So I'm saying I can beat Ronnie Sullivan, but I did get beat. I know what I says to them. Senior! I say it all the time, right? People like me, you know, so beat. So anyway, I gave them a couple of lines in, in one of them. Like, I found out, oh, I found out, by the way, the three lads were from England, I think they were from Portsmouth. They were on a season job. And uh, they says, big man, he says, whereabouts did you get that in here? And I says, I brought it with me, mate. That's God's guess, though. They went, what? They went, right, right, right. I still have a few grams here, right? And I went, mean, that's fucking great. I said, I know, mate. I said, they were great night. Fucking, I told them how we argued and I smuggled her and pff, all the rest there. So, so they says to me, they went, I wanted to get home. I went, right, we'll go to about 10 o'clock, right? I wanted to get up the road, right? Still with a couple of there, right? 
So one of the guys says, he says, I says, look, can you want to use one me hey? I says, I don't know where I is. I've wandered all over Benidorm. And it went like, it says, eh, he says, where do you stay? I says, Hotel Amelia. So the three of them, I didn't realise, but I realised they'd done a wee kind of a smirk. And one of them went, right, oh, they were good, the boys were smart, I don't mind. They went, we've got a car there, see if one of us takes you to your hotel, we know where it is. Can you give us a bit of that? I says, I'll give you one, gee, right? So one of the guys, can't remember their names, he went, well, I'll take you. Do you know where he took me to? It's <laughs> the Langest Street roof in the corner and the hotel was there. It wasn't even a three minute walk. And I'm going, well, the guy still took me, you know what I mean? A deal's a deal in my eyes, isn't it? So, they were smart. But I was going to, yeah, I was going to leave my butt anyway, but so he's right me around. So, the ex girlfriend is standing like that. She's at the hotel. So, she sees me across the road with this guy. But I'm only getting a, a wee bit out there and getting a bag in my gram. And uh, I says to him, I says, the girlfriend, the other ex girlfriend, I went, right. So he let me out, he says, thanks a lot, mate, give me a good bit, you know what I mean? Still had about 2G left. So I walked by her and she went, I saw you in that car with that guy, is that your boyfriend? And do you know what I says? What if it is? We have broke up. Oh, she didn't know what to say to that. So she started, I was quite content to go up to the 16th floor and I tell Amelia, do you know what she says? She went, eh, by the way, eh, you know, give me my stuff out of the room. So this was after 10 and I'd left at what, 12 or something? She's on eight. She went to cause that and I went, no. She went, I'll get security and I ran out. The worst thing I'd done, I ran out to the reception and I shouted to the guy, I says, get the police here. Mad with it with everything. Then I walked by her and I said, send him up to my door and I'm going to do them in. Oh, I was a big man for you guys that night. Big man. Right? So anyway, what happened is I'm up in the room, pacing up and down, phoned a friend. He's like, get rid of the stuff. He says, they're not going to come to the room. Oh, it's a mysterious H that can't be mentioned for legal reasons. So Sunday morning, he went like, just get your bed out. I've taken him and she's going to come up to the door. So the door went... Can you stop phoning this? This is a live show. Jesus Christ. I didn't know I was that popular. So anyway, I says, I kept taking a line, not taking a line, Superman, no Superman. I says, they come. So the f- final destiny, the door opened. I'm trying to rush this. Mm. And the door opened. Guess who was there? It was two security guards. No, two, two, pres- two, two, pres- two police officers at the front. Her in the middle and two security guards. But the two police officers, to be fair, they were more than fair polite. They says, can we come in and get her clothes? And I went, what I want? They went, what? I went, slam the door. So I says, Ian, you said you were going to attack them. So the door opened it, less than a minute later, I ran her, grabbed a lamp, and I smashed one of them right out of the fucking head with it. Right? And they've got guns, but I was the thing, because this supersonic stuff had done my not, and I know the Ickies and all that, I was away with it. Right? So the next minute, they've all got me in the fucking, the flare. He's trying to pull his gun out and all that. And the next minute, I've got in the balcony, and uh, they've got me cuffed. She's stoning in there, and they went, you want to play little games now, big man? And I was just like, oh, well, whatever, know what I mean? Hadn't even started on me yet. They pulled these big truncheons out, whack. Whack, whack, she stood watching and see every time they hurt me and she instead of going, ah, I was shouting, what was it, more, no, 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 no more, I was shouting, ah, what was it, hard, no, harder, I was shouting harder, but uh, I showed, we love you, I think we should have last scene. Gave her last 25 with a baseball bat out of her ass and I went, fuck, and I've done five. Do you know I took about 10 or 12 of them? Big kind smashed all the place, left me broken, took my cuffs out. Do you know they were leaving me because they left me a bit of damage? With his daddy, stupid ass, 16 up, see if they knew my convictions and they threw me out. Who, who attacks armed police in uh, Spain puts one a lamp out of their This is true. Right? Me. So... They all went out the room and they were going, like, you left and I ran and I went, ah! They all grabbed me again, they put me down, put me in a lift and one of them went like that. So you think you're a big man? They put a gun 
in my mouth and I'm going, <coughs> anybody that says that they're no well, frightened, say, a gun getting put into your mouth is a liar. So anyway, they got down the stairs, took me to the police station, good as a word, they never barked me at the police station, I could see they tortured me and all that. So they processed me, they put me in the cell where Algerians and all that, right? So they were going like that to me, they thought I was just a tourist, and they were going like that, eh, blah, 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 blah. Eh, when you go to the prison, you'll get that, right? And I went, so I ended up turning and saying, look, I'm not a tourist. I haven't even asked the guys in the cell, could you get me a glass of water? She's going to get it. So they go to the bruises to her. The cocaine was wearing enough, the egg is wearing enough, the drinks were enough. I was, I was in there for two days. So I says, by the way, I says, none of these are dating my ass, right? I says, I've done 16 years of the old Bailey. I says, I know the IRA. I says, they ain't my pals. Then I says, they train Etta. Etta? 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 And the one who went, I know what Etta is. I says, so I'm not a wee tourist. So anyway, we get to court because I'm rushing a story. And I had a woman appointed solicitor. She came to see me. She went, Ian, you're getting eight months today in prison. Uh, straight away, eight months. And I went, not a problem. I says, when I'm lying at the swimming pool, the officers can come down with sangria in the morning. When I'm lying at the pool, she went, what? She can see English. She's on. what are you on about? I says, well, is that not what happened? She says, there's no swimming pool here. I says, what's here? She went, rats, maggots and faggots. She was meaning the rats, the maggots and the faggots were the fucking Algerians. They would try to do that to me, right? So I went, oh, wait a fucking minute. She says, you can get out of this. I went, what do you mean? She says, have you any convictions in uh, Britain I went where, where do you start does, does Big Ben tell the time I'm going Edinburgh High Court Sheriff Court Hamilton Court Glasgow Court she's going no 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 I'm going Old Bailey she went no 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 she, I never let her finish her question she says have you any criminal convictions in Spain and I went no she says well you're a first offender you can get eight months suspended and compensation, you're willing to do that? I went, yeah. And I remember there was a guy, Archibald, Archie McCafferty, he came from Australia, he killed three people, and he got extradited back. He got done for something in Scotland, and he was treated as a first offender. So this is where Spain ran it, which was good. So I went in front of this big desk, and uh, I didn't know what I was saying, but I've got the paperwork there. I'll get the paperwork. If anybody can read Spanish, I've got it there, what, what I get sentenced to. I got an eight-month prison sentence suspended and I got a £600 euro uh, compensation and I walked out of there, I couldn't believe it, with one flip-flop and it was at half a mile away. I was just glad I didn't need money or nothing. Get back to the hotel and I was going to cause it and I says to the hotel manager, where is she? He went, oh, she's away, she's left you like a soap bag. She left me a soap bag with ten euro in it and my captain that was away. So that was the pain in Spain. I eventually got home and uh, I'll not even mention what else what happened. But that was a true story. I've got the Spanish paperwork to prove this. It was one of the wildest, it still is one of the wildest nights of my life in my criminal career. Getting that gun put in my mouth in the lift and hitting one of them over the lamp with a head and while I was wriggling about on the floor, he's trying to get his gun out. <sighs> See if they knew who I was. Well, I'm no nothing. But see if they knew all my convictions. They'd have just lobbed me right off that link at London. Who that's a cop? It's cheeky police in Spain. And they'll batter you. So that's all I'm going to say for tonight. And I hope you've enjoyed the content. I know there's been a lot of drama happening this week. There's been loads and loads of comments about the situation with me and Mr Ferris, Mr English. But... If things are okay, we could still do a podcast on our own terms. I've no grudges against anyone, so I'll say I'll wrap up tonight, and I hope you've enjoyed the content tonight from Benidorm. That's one of many stories, so I'll say goodbye.